Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we are going to continue with this um, admonition, this uh, advice that President Harold B. Lee gave to the saints. Um, if you want to know the signs of the times of the second coming, this is what he said we should study. And uh, it turned out <laughs> that it's a lot, and so I have to break it up across a few different videos. Uh, I don't think you need to watch them in order. But uh, if this is the first one that you're watching, let me just give you a little recap right here. This is from the Institute uh, Student Manual for New Testament. President Harold B. Lee noted that some church members seek information from unreliable sources concerning the signs that will precede the second coming. He specifically recommended that church members study Matthew 24, Joseph Smith Matthew, uh, in the Doctrine and Covenants sections 38, 45, 101, and 133. President Lee then stated, quote, these are some of the writings with which you which with which you should concern yourselves rather than commentaries that may come from those whose information may, may not be the most reliable and whose motives may be subject to question. Um, so we've already kind of talked about like these kind of timelines right here. Uh, Joseph Smith um, criticized this one by Father Miller, if it'll ever pull up. Here it is. And uh, these kind of timelines continue till today. And it's not just timelines. It's lots of other things. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, the, the best that I can, I try and root everything in the words of the prophets, the scriptures. I know that many others do as well. But um, anyway, I think it's interesting that he specifically points out these different sections. So in the last video, we did Joseph Smith Matthew. OK, uh, now we're going to move on to DNC 45. We're going to save 38 for last because he said that those are um, blessings because I, I found the original source for this uh, statement here. It's under this admonitions for the priesthood of God. So I already read this in the previous video. So we're going to move on to section 45. OK, here we are. Uh, revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet to the church at Kirtland, Ohio, March 7th, 1831. Uh, this is an interesting year, by the way, because this is the year that New Jerusalem was identified, like the location of the center place uh, being Jackson County. And this is one year after the church had been organized. Okay, prefacing the record of this revelation, Joseph Smith's history states that at this age of the church, many false reports and foolish stories were published and circulated to prevent people from investigating the work or embracing the faith. But to the joy of the saints, I received the following, end quote. Okay, first one. Hearken, O ye people of my church, to whom the kingdom has been given. Hearken ye and give ear to him who laid the foundation of the earth who made the heavens and all the hosts thereof, and by whom all things were made, live and move and have a being. And again, I say, hearken unto my voice, lest death shall overtake you in an hour when you think not the summer shall pass and the harvest ended in your souls, not saved. This right here, this is the, the whole imagery, really, when it comes to what's happening on this earth. We're being harvested and you are either a tear, which is something that's not good for eating. It's not, it doesn't produce fruit, uh, although it looks like wheat or your wheat or any of the other harvests that you want, grape harvest, barley harvest, whatever. Um, essentially, that's what's going on uh, in this point in our existence, is there's a harvest. Okay, listen to him who is the advocate with the Father who is pleading your cause before him, saying... Father, behold the sufferings and death of him who did no sin, in whom thou wast well pleased. Behold the blood of thy son which was shed, the blood of him whom thou gavest thyself, uh, gavest that thyself may be, might be glorified. Wherefore, Father, spare these my brethren that believe on my name, that they may come unto me and have everlasting life. Hearken, O ye people of my church, and ye elders listen together, and hear my voice while it is called today and harden not your hearts. For really I say unto you that I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the light and the life of the world, a light that shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. I came unto mine own, and mine own received me not, but unto as many as received me gave I power to do many miracles. 
and to become to become the sons of God, even unto them that believed on my name, I uh, gave I power to obtain eternal life. And even so, I've sent mine everlasting covenant into the world to be a light to the world, to be a standard for my people, and for the Gentiles to seek to it, and to be a messenger before my face to prepare the way before me. For what? For the second coming. Okay. So, everlasting covenant, right? Um and we and we think about you know the covenant path. That's like the big thing right now is being on the covenant path. And he's talking about this right here. He sent the everlasting covenant before him. Um, all the ordinances were restored. Um, and this is how you prepare for the second coming. So okay, now verse ten. Wherefore come ye unto it, and with him that cometh I will reason as with men in days of old, and I will show unto you my strong reasoning. Wherefore, hearken ye together, and let me show unto you even my wisdom, the wisdom of him whom ye say is the God of Enoch and his brethren. Okay, now this is interesting because the thing that's really peculiar about Enoch is that his society, his church, his dispensation, uh, those that followed him, and they were taken off the earth. Because they were they were all righteous enough, they were translated, they achieved um, essentially a terrestrial condition, and they're coming back, uh, I guess, to resume here on the earth during the millennium. What I'm not clear about, and I don't think there's anywhere that clarifies this, is whether you know it's the original people if they've been alive this entire time, has their society continued? Um, since that time over these thousands of years has time like stopped for them uh you know from our point of view if we were like seeing them they're like paused and then they <laughs> come with come uh, to earth back to earth during the millennium and then they resume i don't i don't know Th that's going to be really interesting to find out because if they've been uh continuing their their civilization this entire time i it could get pretty big you know maybe maybe it's not so much a city anymore as it is a, a entire world for you know for all anybody knows uh i mean if noah was able to populate the entire world and he came after enoch and enoch started off with an entire city uh that can make for a really large population maybe more than what we have on earth i don't know that, that seems kind of extreme to me so i i don't know it's just a very curious thing anyway so right here as he's talking about sending the covenant before him which we know has happened that's what we're doing right now we're all trying to get on the covenant path um and now he's invoking uh enoch enochian imagery i guess which we know that's one of the things that happens uh, before the second coming or at the second coming. Okay, so Enoch, who were separated from the earth and were received unto myself, a city reserved until a day of righteousness shall come, a day which was sought for by all holy men, and they found it not because of wickedness and abominations, and confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And, uh, you know, that, that really, yeah, that really is what you are in this world if you're living the gospel. You're a stranger, you're a pilgrim, uh, you don't fit in. You're a peculiar person that's part of a peculiar people. And uh, we're going to inherit the earth in the millennium, and then obviously when the earth is celestialized at the end, after everything is said and done but obtained a promise that they should find it and see see it in their flesh wherefore hearken and i will reason with you i will speak unto you and prophesy as unto men in days of old and i will show it plainly as i showed it unto my disciples as i stood before them in the flesh and spake unto them saying uh, as ye have asked of me concerning the signs of my coming and in the day when i shall come in my glory in the clouds of heaven to fulfill the promises that I have made unto your fathers. 
For as ye have looked upon the long absence of your spirits from your bodies to be a bondage, I will show unto you how the day of redemption shall come, and also the restoration of the scattered Israel. And this is interesting here. I don't know how many times this shows up in scriptures, but I, I wonder where President Nelson initially, where that phrase initially uh, enter, entered his mind, whether it was from the scriptures or, or not. But here's a place in D&C where we have scattered Israel. How, how about we how about we look this up really quick? I feel I feel like we may have come across this before. I'm going to go to the scripture citation index. I'm going to search all the scriptures for scattered Israel. Let's see. We got Jeremiah 31, 10. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it into the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him uh, as a shepherd doth his flock. Okay, and let's go ahead and read the chapter heading uh, for this chapter. In the last days, Israel will be gathered. The Lord declares that Ephraim has the birthright as the firstborn. Uh, the Lord will make a new covenant with Israel to be inscribed in the heart. Then all Israel will know the Lord. So uh, the specific term scattered Israel, Jeremiah 31, and then uh, DNC 17. Oh my... 17 of all numbers. There it is again. President Nelson, the 17th prophet of the church, and all the 17s that have happened this year, and on and on and on, and now this phrase that he uses all the time, found in DNC 45, verse 17. This is crazy. Okay. And now ye behold this temple which is in Jerusalem, which ye call the house of God, and your enemies say that uh, this house shall never fall. But verily I say unto you, the desolation shall come upon this generation as a thief in the night, and this people shall be destroyed and scattered among all nations. And this temple which ye now see shall be thrown down, that there shall not be left one stone upon another. And it shall come to pass that this generation of Jews shall not pass away until every desolation which I have told you concerning them come to, uh, shall come to pass. And, uh, sorry, ye say that ye know that the end of the world cometh. Ye say also that ye know that the heavens and the earth shall pass away. And in this ye say truly, for so it is. But these things which I have told you shall not pass away until all shall be fulfilled. And this I have told you concerning Jerusalem, and when the day shall come, shall a remnant be scattered among all nations, but they shall be gathered again, but they shall remain until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Um, and again, I'm going to do like a, a deep dive into the time of the Gentiles, but we've already gone over this about a billion times, and um, it very well could be that that time is over based on what we've researched. Okay, and in that day shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars, and the whole earth shall be in commotion, and men's hearts shall fail them, and they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. See, this right here, again, I, I pointed this out last time, because essentially what we're reading here is text from uh, Matthew 24 and Joseph Smith Matthew. And these things, wars and rumors of wars, uh, commotion, men's hearts failing them, they've all been declared as fulfilled or having happened in, um, it, it's, it's been said in general, in general conference. Okay. Uh, right here you have, I just saw it right here in 2005, you have president Hinckley. Um, he says, uh, men's hearts shall fail them, for fear, fear shall come upon all people. Uh, there's commotion right there. Uh, and pretty early on, they talked about uh, wars and rumors of wars already being fulfilled, like in the beginning of this dispensation. And it's pretty much only gotten worse. All these red 
uh, blocks right here, these are all wars. This is my second coming timeline, and it's not a timeline of the future. It's a timeline of what has already happened, and uh, things that general authorities have said have been fulfilled. Anyway, okay, so let's go back to it. Um, and the love of men shall wax cold, and iniquity shall abound. And when the times of the Gentiles has come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness, and it shall be the fullness of my gospel. Okay. And when the time of the Gentiles is come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness, and it shall be the fullness of my gospel. I just want to see really quick. Let's see. DNC 4527. Love of men wax cold. I'm, I'm going to bet that that has also been declared in a general conference. So scripture citation index, DNC, uh, 45 and I already, I already forgot, uh, 27. Okay. Let's go down here. Yeah. Look at that this year, this last conference, Quentin L. Cook, he cited that we live in a world where iniquity abounds and uh, hearts turn from God because of the precepts of men. And he, um, he cites two scriptures, uh, both from the same section, verse 27 and 29. Uh, M. Russell Ballard, 1995. Uh, Much adversity is man-made. Man, men's hearts turn cold, and the spirit of Satan controls their actions. In foreseeing the day of suffering in our time, okay, our time, the Savior said, the love of men shall wax cold and, and iniquity shall abound. Violence, immorality, and other evils run rampant on the earth. Much adversity uh, has its origin in the principle of agency. So, and you can see, it's been said a number of times. This is, this is going to have to be another one that I add to the timeline. If you're waiting for the love of man, men uh, to wax cold and for iniquity to abound, in general conference, they say, that's already here. Look no further, we are there. Okay, moving on to 20, verse 29, and this is what Elder Cook said. Uh, he cited this one too. But they receive it not, for they perceive not the light, and they turn their hearts from me because of the precepts of men. And in that generation shall the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge. Uh, for desolating sickness shall cover the land. And, uh, you know, as far as I know, this hasn't been uh, officially declared as fulfilled. Although the desolating sickness and the scourge, uh, it's been talked about a couple of times in conference. One person was saying, sometimes I wonder if the desolating scourge isn't uh, mental illness. Uh, I'm going to show you right now. Let's see. Let's look up Scourge. So, Elder Razman, there's another Scourge sweeping the globe. Attacks on your and my religious freedom. Um, I want to see the one where he talked about mental illness, though. It doesn't matter. Let's look up Desolating. Maybe that would be better desolating oh desolating sickness oh here it is yeah addressing mental health eric w uh kopischke kopischke um so this was in 2021 and he says and he's talking about this uh this very verse he says, during my ministry, I've encountered hundreds of individuals and families with similar experiences. Sometimes I wonder if the desolating sickness covering the land, as mentioned in the scriptures, might include mental illness. It is worldwide, covering every continent and culture and affecting all, young, old, rich, and poor. Members of the church have not been excluded. And, um, you know, when it comes to mental illness, some of it is obviously genetic. There's just, there's no helping that. Um, other, other mental illness, uh, 
personality disorders and stuff, according to psychology, uh, can be brought on by different situations. So, for example, PTSD. PTSD, by definition, is experiencing traumatic stress and uh, kind of reliving some trauma in the past. Uh, so that's what brought it on. It's, you know, um, and, and this is a complex topic, but one thing that you, you could probably be sure about is that as wickedness in increases, okay, that means so does toxic behavior and abuse and abuse creates more uh, mental health problems because you have abusers that are abusing more people. They're abusing people. And then those people are more likely to continue abuse. And it like, it just fans out like a wildfire. So yeah, it, that makes sense to me. Now he's not saying that this, this is like a declaration that this has been fulfilled. So I'm not going to put it on my timeline. Um, but you know, they let him say that in general conference. Uh, if it wasn't doctrinally sound, it wouldn't go into general conference. All, all talks are screened. So you could say, uh, like just like you said here, maybe this is partially fulfilled. If not totally, because you, you could include um, other things. If you go to my timeline, look at these desolating sicknesses. Everything that's in black on this side is uh, like a pandemic or something like that. So you have the third plague. It's nothing that really affected us over here in the West. Um, it was mostly like a China and Asia thing, but it lasted for a long time. Spanish flu, um, go up here. You have the, you may not realize, but the HIV and AIDS pandemic, uh, it's considered a pandemic. And obviously it's worldwide. And uh, there's an official start date for it. It's uh, the 5th of June, 1981. And it continues all the way until today. And then, of course, we had COVID-19. And although it wasn't the most deadly thing that could ever happen, uh, like like how um, pandemics are portrayed in uh, fiction and in movies, it, it did kill people. And it, it was worldwide. And it wasn't just the sickness itself that caused suffering. It was the impacts that it had on everybody. Because there was a big divide between people about, do you wear the mask? Do you not wear the mask? Did you get vaccinated? Did you not get vaccinated? And, and, and just all sorts of fights. And, um, you know, it made everybody's life worse. <laughs> uh, with all the isolating. And it just, it was a, this was a major event right here so i wouldn't disqualify this as the sickness uh, maybe that fulfills that scripture but i'm not prepared to say because I, I don't just guess these things i i go off of if a general authority has said that that is the case and no one has said that yet but that doesn't mean that it, it can't already be fulfilled we just don't know for sure so um yeah so and there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they see an overflowing scourge for a desolating sickness shall cover the land. Which, according to what we just read, could include mental illness. It'd be interesting to see the mental illness uh, statistics. Okay, but my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved. Uh, but among the wicked, men shall lift up their voices and curse God and die. And there shall be earthquakes also in diverse places and many desolations, yet men will harden their hearts against me and they will take up the sword one against another and they will kill one another. This has been going on. Earthquakes in diverse places, that's been talked about in general conference. If you're, if you're waiting for this to happen, it's been happening. Obviously, hardening hearts, right? Taking up, taking up the sword one against another, that's been... Uh, that's been on the increase ever since the American Civil War. Okay. And now when I, the Lord, had spoken these words unto my disciples, they were troubled. And I said unto them, Be not troubled, for when all these things shall come to pass, you may know that the promises which have been made unto you shall be fulfilled. And when the light shall begin to break forth, it shall be with them like unto a parable, which I will show you. Ye look and behold the fig trees. 
and you see them with your eyes and you say that they begin to shoot forth and their leaves are yet tender. Uh, that summer is now nigh at hand. Even so, even so it shall be in the day when you shall see all these things, uh, then you ye, ye know that the hour is nigh. So this, if you were just to like base your entire view of the second coming off of this, you know, he just went through a whole list of things that have been talked about in general conference. Uh, not just once, by the way, but in some cases over and over and over again. Look at this timeline. Okay, look at everything that's on it. Yellow is when someone says in general conference that something has been fulfilled. Blue are, you know, major church events. Um, dark blue are major uh, events that have to do with Israel, okay, and Jerusalem. Red is wars. Black is pandemics and sicknesses. Uh, gray is like economic problems. Um, so ever since the beginning of this dispensation, let's go back here to, well, even before you could say, uh, because the first, the first prophecy that I have is fulfilled is this one about not being able to read a sealed book. Th this happened, uh, two years before the church was, um, before the church was organized. That's what I have so far. Um, but as, as I scroll through this going up, look at all the yellow, okay, things that have been fulfilled according to the Lord's servants in general conference, just over and over and over again, wars, 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 Israel, 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 on and on and on and on. Okay? Okay? Look at all this. You can come and look at this anytime that you want to. The link is in the description of every video. Uh, you can look at it, but you cannot change it. Okay, so with all that that has already happened, let's read this again. Even so, it shall be in the day when they shall see all these things. Then shall they know the hour is nigh. Right? So we probably shouldn't be saying things like Christ delayeth his coming. Okay? Because there's people that uh, push it out. They push it out far. Okay. From everything that we've read so far, and with verse 38, that once you see these things, you know that the hour is nigh, I would say that we are pretty darn close. Uh, let's continue, though, that because there's more. Okay. And it shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. He that feareth him is looking for this, right? And we obviously can't make it happen. Um, but I think everybody is pretty much at this point on red alert. Probably since 2020, maybe a little bit before, maybe since the, the eclipse. I don't know. Uh, everyone has a different story. But generally, within the last, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, something like that. So uh, we are commanded to look for the signs, right? And uh, notice he's not talking about trying to piece it together. He's not talking about uh, trying to predict how things are going to, like putting together a timeline like the, the Millerite uh, timeline right here, but actually looking for things as they actually occur, right? And they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. Uh, they shall behold blood and fire and vapors of smoke. And before the, before the day of the Lord shall come, the, shun, the sun shall be darkened and the moon be turned into blood and the stars fall from heaven. Again, President Hinckley has said that that has already happened. Um, I'm not so sure it talks about the stars falling and it is from Joel chapter two. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Okay. Again, if he, now it could happen again. Cause like when, when you're talking about these things, um, you know, 
uh, yeah, look at this here in Joel. Wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. So if you were just to be left to your own devices and you're reading that, naturally, you probably come up with a, a bigger uh, type event in your mind. Like, oh my, like when I was young, I was thinking, oh my gosh, the moon is going to be just like a deep red and it's going to be so obvious and like the the sun is going to stop shining it's going to be all black and you know and that those are the kind of uh, things that you might imagine as you're reading this but apparently that's not the case so if these have already happened okay remember th and it's interesting because the angel moroni told joseph smith that this had not yet occurred uh when he was visiting him before he received the book of mormon um, it's in Joseph Smith. Uh, what is it? It's in Joseph Smith history that he says that. Well, in uh, 2001, President Hinckley declares that it is fulfilled at this point, and it's probably not like anything that most people had imagined. So, when we're talking about the natural fulfillment of prophecy, um, I think that this is a good example. I really do. It's probably not going to be so obvious. Otherwise, like I've said in, in a previous video, how is it that people are going to keep living their lives and not realize what's happening? Or how is it, just like Elder Anderson said, uh, I, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was him that said in the Christmas devotional that the reason why the time of the second coming is not revealed OK, until like the day before to the prophet and to some others is because we're being tested. It's a time of testing. So if you have huge, obvious things taking place, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? When Christ comes in the clouds, it's like game over. Now, lucky for us, we're going to have um, appearances of Christ to the church. Adam and Diamond. Um, I'm still looking into this whole thing about him coming to the temple in New Jerusalem. Um, that's something I have not touched on uh, like I would well, I would, would like to have. We know that he's shown up in the Kirtland Temple. He's shown up in the Salt Lake Temple to Lorenzo Snow. Uh, no doubt he's had many other appearances, most likely, uh, to other temples. And maybe he's very active right now throughout all the temples in the world. I don't know. Anyway, so um, I, I just I get the feeling that there's not going to be huge, big, obvious things, uh, even though you have like all these record breaking events like uh, the volcano earlier this year in January. So there's like left room for doubt where people can just be like, oh, it's just uh, climate change or, you know, it, we're we're the ones that are doing this. Um you know, there's still room for doubt, but those that are spiritually attuned will recognize it. You'd be like, and they'd be like, no, uh, this is definitely stuff that's talked about in the scriptures. And so it, it, it gives you the opportunity to doubt or to have faith. Right. But if you have like really huge things, it kind of takes away the faith. Um, all right. So let's go back. Um, and the remnant shall be gathered unto this place, and then <clears throat> shall they look for me, and behold, I will come, and they shall see me in the clouds of heaven, clothed with power and great glory, with all the holy angels, and he that watches not for me shall be cut off. Now, that is pretty sharp right there. Um, and I don't think it's like so much the fact that you're not watching it's like you're a good person but you're not watching but i think th this is my own opinion you can chime in but i think it more has to do with your state of being your your state of spirituality where it's like are you one of these people that you're just kind of like going to church you're going through the motions and you don't really believe that there is a second coming like you're just kind of like yeah yeah i know that's part of the church but in your world uh, the church is more of just kind of like a good philosophy. It's a good way of living, but you don't really believe some of these more literal things that Christ really is coming again. I think I think that we're probably in trouble if um, we're treating the church like 
a philosophy. And what's really disturbing, like early on in my channel, there was somebody that was like, you know, uh, you might want to look into this. Like the Book of Mormon is great. It's um, inspired fiction. And, and there's like this like inspired fiction thing that's going around uh, or like among, I guess, the academic circles within the, within the church, BYU. I don't know. Uh, these people that think that they're really smart. Um, I, I'm I'm afraid for them. Because I, I would think that they are the type that are not watching, and they don't believe. They think that it's just a, a man-made church or what, whatever it is. Anyway, you can you can put your thoughts in the comments. Okay, but before the arm of the Lord shall fall, an angel shall sound his trump, and the saints that have slept shall come forth to meet me in the cloud. Wherefore. Uh, if ye have slept in peace, blessed are you. For as you now behold me and know that I am, even so shall ye come unto me, and your soul shall live, and your redemption shall be perfected, and the saints shall come forth from the four quarters of the earth. Then shall the arm of the Lord fall upon the nations. So here, here's kind of a thing uh, where it says, like, resurrection first. And then after that, um, I, I guess, essentially the destruction of the nations. But let, let's continue reading. And then shall the Lord set his foot upon this mount, and it shall, meaning mount, the Mount of Olives, and it shall cleave in twain, and the earth shall tremble, and reel to and fro, and the heavens also shall shake. And the Lord shall utter his voice, and all the ends of the earth shall hear it together. Or, sorry. And the ends of the earth shall hear it, and the nations of the earth shall mourn, and they have they that have laughed shall see their folly. And calamity shall cover the mocker, and the scorner shall be consumed, and they that have watched for iniquity shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. Um, okay, and then shall the Jews look upon me and say, What are these wounds in thy hands and in thy feet? Then, sh then shall they know that I am the Lord. For I will say unto them, These wounds are the wounds with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who was lifted up. I am Jesus that was crucified. I am the Son of God. And then shall they weep because of their iniquities. Then shall they lament because they persecuted their king. And then shall the heathen nations be redeemed. And they shall, they that knew no law shall have part in the first resurrection and it shall be tolerable for them. And sh Satan shall be bound, uh, that he, he shall have no place in the hearts of the children of men. And at that day when I come, when I shall come in my glory, shall the parable be fulfilled, which I spake concerning the ten virgins. So again, I, it seems like this is connected with the, the way it seems to me, it seems like this is basically the sign of the Son of Man, because the sign of the Son of Man is Christ coming. Joseph Smith said it would start out small, and it would grow over time. Um, we've talked about the possibility that maybe Adam on Diamond, the sessions would wind up in Adam on, in uh, the cloud, uh, whatever that is. I don't know if it's like a big piece of land. I don't know if it's just floating in the air. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But um, we read in Daniel that Adam is going to come to Christ in the cloud, and then the nations will be given him. Uh, we read how the 12 apostles, the original 12, will be with him to judge uh, the righteous, to judge Israel. And it talks about them being in the cloud. So I think that there's things that happen in the cloud. And so when it's talking here about the parable of the ten virgins, it sounds like you want to be able to be with Christ in the cloud when he comes and descend with him. I think there's going to be things that happen up there. I, I, I don't know. It's just the way it kind of seems to me. For they that are wise and have received the truth and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, uh, they shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. And uh, 
it's interesting because this is what president Nelson specifically has said that in coming days, you're not going to be able to survive spiritually without the constant guidance of the Holy ghost. And, uh, he's, if he's preparing us for that, uh, to have the Holy ghost be our guide, it, it seems like he's probably also preparing us for this to, uh, not be cast into the fire and being able to abide the day. So, that's it's interesting okay and the earth shall be given unto them for an inheritance and they shall multiply and wax strong and their children shall grow up without sin unto salvation what's it say for multiply jeremiah 30 19 and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving in the voice of them that make merry and i will multiply them and they shall not be few uh, I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. For the Lord shall be in their midst, and his glory shall be upon them, and he will be their king and their lawgiver. And now, behold, I say unto you, it shall not be given unto you to know any further concerning this chapter until the New Testament be translated, and in it... All these things shall be made known. So maybe this is referring to uh, Joseph Smith Matthew. I, I would guess. Let's see. What, let's click on the footnote for New Testament. Um, see an excerpt in the Pearl of Great Price in Joseph Smith Matthew. See also Bible footnotes and appendix excerpts from Joseph Smith translation. Yeah. Um okay yeah so we went over joseph smith matthew but not anything that was in the like the appendix uh wherefore i give unto you that you may now translate it that you may be prepared for th for the things to come for verily i say unto you that great things await you ye hear of wars in foreign lands but behold i say unto you uh, they are nigh even at your doors, and not many years hence ye shall hear of wars in your own lands. Yeah, uh, the civil war. Wherefore I, the Lord, hath said, Gather ye out from the eastern lands, assemble yourselves together, ye elders of my church, go forth into the western countries, call upon the inhabitants to repent, and insomuch as they do repent, build up churches unto me. And with one heart and with one mind, gather up your riches that ye may purchase an inheritance which shall hereafter be appointed unto you. And uh, it shall be called the New Jerusalem, a land of peace, a city of refuge, a place of safety uh, for the saints of the Most High God. Now remember, we've already read, I have a playlist called New Jerusalem. We know that there's def different definitions of New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem has actually been applied to all of North and South America, uh, which I know is kind of a strange concept because uh, a city <laughs> typically isn't as large as a continent, let alone two, but uh, that's what has been said. And um, this is something here that, again, I think a lot of people take this to mean, th this is where you get a lot of the everyone is going to gather to Missouri uh, for safety. And that does not seem to be the case at all. At all. It's the stakes of Zion, where there is physical protection um, occasionally, uh, but definitely spiritual protection. Let's see what it says for refuge. That would be a whole video by itself. A place of safety, protection divine. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord shall uh, also shall be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it, and it shall be called Zion. Well, let's just look it up. DNC 4566. DNC, okay, let's go. Let's just pull up a new one. DNC 45 66. 
We'll see if anyone's talked about this in general conference. Harold B. Lee. And the gathering together upon the land of Zion and upon her stakes may be for defense and for a refuge from the storm and from wrath when it, when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. Why was this to be called a place of refuge and a place of safety? Said the Lord in another revelation. Uh, and the glory of the Lord shall be there and the terror of the Lord also shall be there insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it and it shall be called Zion. The time when these things should be, the time when these things shall be would be as the Lord said, when the wicked shall slay the wicked and the, and the fear and fear shall come upon every man and the saints also also shall hardly escape. Nevertheless, I, the Lord, am with them and will come down in heaven from the presence of my father and consume the wicked with unquenchable, unquenchable fire. Another future reason uh, for the gathering is given us with this revelation. Wherefore, seeing that I, the Lord, have decreed all these things upon the face of the earth, I will that my saints should assemble, be assembled upon the land of Zion, and that every man should take righteousness in his hands and faithfulness upon his loins, and lift a warning voice unto the inhabitants of the earth, and declare both by word and by flight that desolation shall come upon the wicked. As we say here today, we should be mindful of the fact that we are we are those of whom these revelations have spoken. <laughs> there, there it is right there. We are those who have been gathered from, from out of spiritual Babylon. Or perhaps we represent the second or third or even fourth or fifth generation of those who heeded the call and felt the spirit of gathering. Just as was the case in the days of, of the prophet Joseph Smith, so in our day the leaders of the church have told us that Satan has been lying in wait to deceive and seeking whom he might devour. This is this is going to have to be another one that I put on the on the tr on the um, tracker because people read this okay in in using their own reasoning and I'm not blaming anybody uh, because not everybody knows about the scripture citation index it's a very powerful tool to find out what these scriptures actually mean and uh, if they've been fulfilled or not and here you have Harold B Lee who says that this has already happened. It's it's the gathering that has already taken place. It started in the Americas, okay? Primarily in um you know, in, uh, wherever the saints were until they ended up in Utah. Okay? There's already been that gathering and now the scope has been broadened and everyone's being gathered to the stakes of Zion throughout the world. And it's not uh, a fortress city that has some kind of like divine force field or something, um, you know, fighters, uh, anti-aircraft, you know, technology from the 10 lost tribes. It's, it's gathering. It's just what's happening right now. And look, he said this all the way back in 1948. He said it back in 1948. So, yeah, this is another one. This is going to go on on the timeline. It's uh, okay. All right. Okay. So, and the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord also shall be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come unto it, and it shall be called Zion. This is happening. It has happened. It is happening. And you can either r read this the way that a lot of people do in kind of like a science fiction-y type way uh, that it's going to be like everyone from across the entire world that's a member of the church is going to go to Missouri and all the rest of the world is going to literally be in a state of uh, warfare, possibly nuclear warfare. And so, but there's going to be this, uh, this protection to where the armies of the earth will not go against the literal center place of new jerusalem um so and, and in fact they're going to be afraid of it uh because of its technology or because of its spiritual power 
that's not at all what it's saying. We just heard from a prophet of God. I don't at the time I don't think he was prophet. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. At that time he was in the council of the twelve, of the council of the twelve. It's the same thing. They're not gonna let him say that if it's not uh true. And he later became prophet. And then he said, read this very uh section that he just cited from right here. Okay. Um and it shall come to pass among the wicked that every man that will not take up his sword against his neighbor must needs flee unto Zion for safety. You guys, there have been so many times that people have um, thrown this verse at me saying, look, we haven't seen this yet. It says in the scriptures, it says in the scriptures that if you don't take up your sword against your neighbor, you have to, uh, then if you don't want to do that, then you're, you're going to have to go to Zion that is not the case. It, this is talking about like in sp like spiritually. If you don't want to be part of the contention of this world, then you're going to have to be in the church and avoid contention. And ideally, there should not be contention within the church. It should be a safe, a place of safety, right? Um, just I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you. Just, Harold B. Lee, he defined these verses for us. And there shall be gathered unto it out of every nation under heaven, and it shall be the only people that shall not be at war one with another. And I feel like uh, now more than ever, that's the case. Contention in the world has just risen and risen and risen. And I just talked about earlier how uh, COVID really brought out the contention uh, out of people. And... Um, it's probably just going to continue to get worse as the world gets more and more wicked. There's going to be more factions, more politics, more social issues, more this and that. People essentially killing each other or trying to kill each other uh, with their words. Okay, verse 70. And it shall be said among the wicked, let us not go up to battle against Zion, for the inhabitants of Zion are terrible, wherefore we cannot stand. And it shall come to pass that the righteous shall be shall be gathered out from among all nations and shall come to Zion, singing with songs of everlasting joy. And now I say unto you, keep these things from going abroad unto the world until it is expedient in me, that ye may accomplish this work in the eyes of the people and in the eyes of your enemies, that they may not know your works until ye have accomplished the thing which I have commanded you. And when they shall know it, uh, that they may consider these things. For when the Lord shall appear, he shall be terrible unto them, that uh, that fear may seize upon them, and they shall stand afar off and tremble. And all nations shall be afraid because of the terror of the Lord and the power of his might. Even so, amen. So, it seems like um, a lot, if not all, that we just read in section 45 has been fulfilled or is currently in fulfillment. It really, really seems that way. When you read this, and then you read what is actually said in General Conference, you see that these things, like, we are there. It's there. We're not waiting for these things. It's happening. Um, that's what you have to do. You have to read the scriptures, okay? And you may come up with some picture in your head of what they're telling you. But then you check in with the twelve apostles, the prophet, um, the general, sorry, the general authorities, the general officers of the church, and you see what they're saying about it. They're going to be more inspired and have a better idea of when these things are taking place, and they are. Okay, well. Uh, this is going longer than I thought, so I guess we'll just uh, we'll move on to the next one in another video. The next one's going to be DNC 101. So, yeah, this is some pretty amazing stuff that we're coming across. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.